Hi everyone and welcome back to the Crafty Yellow Camper. Um, I am going to show you another new product today from the July, uh, June, July to December mini catalogue and they are these lovely snowflakes. They are actually called wonderful snowflakes. Um, they are die cut um, to, ready to pop out from this really lovely sort of pearlescent paper hopefully you can see that shine um, they come you get 12 in a pack and they come packaged between no you don't get 12 sorry about that guys i've just made you feel a bit seasick i just had to get oh, get rid of my low battery um notification sorry you get 24 in a pack you get four sheets of six of them and they come packaged between tissue paper so you don't damage them um, so I'm just going to very carefully pop one out they don't just fall out they are attached so you do have to very gently wiggle them out I probably should have done this before I turned the camera on shouldn't I There. They appear to be attached just on the the long, yeah, there we go, on these long points. So don't need to pull too hard, just give them a little little tug, and then you get out this beautiful iridescent snowflake. Okay, so for our card today, we're gonna use um some more of the lights aglow paper just purely because I like it so much um, and it is quite a good value pack actually you could do get quite a lot of paper for your money okay so I'm using the cherry cobbler card base so this is half of an A4 sheet um, cut that way cut down the middle so for UK um, or European A4 it's cut at 14.8 and it's scored and folded at 10 and a half and we are actually going to use it in the tent fold position so it opens up like that so it's a basic c6 um i've gone ahead and cut my cardstock just to speed things up a little bit and what i've done is i've just picked um some coordinating colors so this is cherry cobbler um this is basic black with the gold on. They've all got some shimmer on them. And then what I've actually got as well is some very vanilla. Now, this is a colour that I used to use an awful lot before we had thick basic white because our basic white just wasn't thick enough for card uh, bases. But since we've had um, the thick basic white, I haven't used very vanilla much at all, but I thought it would really complement the papers and just make them sort of stand out a little bit from the red. So my DSP or designer series paper to give it its correct name now i have mixed my measurements here because it worked for me but it's nine and a half centimeters long and one and a half inches wide um i probably could tell you roughly what that is one and a half inches will pro be about oh um let's measure it shall we in centimeters would be 3.8 which is why I mixed my measurements, it just made it easier. So what I'm gonna do with these is I'm just gonna use some Tombow Multipurpose Liquid Glue and I'm just gonna stick my DSP onto the very vanilla. And the very vanilla, again, I've mixed my measurements because it worked for me. And this is cut at um, one and three quarters wide in inches and 10 centimeters long something's happened on that paper that hasn't been cut straight there we go that's better um yeah so i've got two that are cherry cobbler colored and one is the basic black and they've all got the shimmer on but you could use any um any of the colors in the uh dsp pack they'd all work I think excuse me it's been a long day and I seem to be having a little bit of trouble lining my cardstock up don't I 
Is that one the same length? No, that one's very slightly shorter. Because our A4 card stock, oh my goodness me, is that one shorter as well? Yeah, because our card stock is not um, exactly 30 centimetres wide, it's 29 point something, so I appear to have one set of um, card stock pieces that are very slightly shorter which won't work because of the measurements of the paper. So let's check this one. Yeah, that was fine. So less is more when it comes to the glue. You want enough that it gives you a little bit of wiggle room, but you don't want it all squirting out of the sides. Okay, so let's line this one up. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to space these equidistant on the card front itself like that okay so we've just got that little bit of border which just distinguishes otherwise if you were to stick particularly this one straight onto the um, cardstock base it just would blend in and probably this one as well so um, for this we're going to raise these up a little bit so I'm just going to add some dimensionals to the backs. Now I'm a bit tight with my dimensionals, so, and I fully intend to give this card by hand and not send it through the post. So I'm only putting two on the back. I could go with three, I suppose. If you were going to need to post this card, I would suggest that you stick these panels down um, with glue rather than... Um, dimensionals because you might end up with the recipient having to pay an extra charge for their card if it's too thick to go through that letterbox thingy that they use okay now i've got two reds and a black so i'm going to put my black in the middle that's just because that's my my thing is to have them sort of matching but you could just do them in whatever order you want so I'm just going to try and make sure that that's spaced and is straight. And then I can come in with my other two each side. You could start from the left hand side, but you might end up far too far over and then no room for the one on the right. So it just works a little bit easier if you um, start from the middle and work your way out. I tried to decide if this one that looks like mermaid scales had a right way up and decided for me that that's the right way up. Oh, and that's not straight. I'm just going to pull that back, back off there carefully. Straighten that up a bit. There we go. Right, so that's that. So that's the base of our card. Um, and then what I thought we'd do is have this lovely snowflake in the middle there. Now, the good people at Stampin' Up! have obviously thought that we might do this. And if you notice, the middle of that snowflake is actually a hexagon. A hexagon that is pretty much the same shape as a dimensional. Actually, perfectly the same shape as a dimensional. So they've obviously given it some thought about how we're going to mount these. And I'm just so I've just popped a, a large dimensional or standard dimensional on the back and just because it's me I feel the need to have it pointing north and south in the middle there we go so I've just popped that on there now you could put a gem or something in there but because that's per lesson I don't know that it actually needs it let's just have a little look and see what we've got um, sorry guys I'm just digging in my gems So we could have one of these gold circles in the middle. Uh, we could have an opal round in the middle, just to add to that pearlescence. Oh, I bought some Christmassy ones. Well, I thought I bought some Christmassy ones, but I don't actually know. 
Ah, here we go. We also have the red and green. They're called red and green adhesive back pearls, but bizarrely, there is also a gold and a blue. So let's just have a little look. I think these might be a little bit small. So the red is hiding under there. And I think, oh, I'm flicking them everywhere now. I think that red, yeah, that's way too small. So although they're very pretty, and you could put maybe put a line of them down here or up here, I think what we're going to do is go with either these brush metallic adhesive back dots or the opal rounds. I'm sort of leaning towards an opal round, actually. But should we have these just to... Who knows? Let's take the strip out and have a little look. Okay, so we can either go a gold opal round to pick up the gold there. Or... This might be just a little bit too much. They, they're stuck to the packaging at the back, which stops them going everywhere, but doesn't help when you want to try them. Or we could have one of those. No, I think we're going to go for the gold. Um, and I've just managed to flick half a dozen opalescent pearls everywhere all over my table. Just pop those back on there. And I'll fiddle. I'll fiddle with those to put those back in the packet later. So I'm just bringing in my pokey tool and I think we'll go for one of these gold rounds. There we go. Yeah, I think that just finishes that off. There, there we go. So there's our finished card and I will of course put a white panel inside where I can stamp a greeting and um, do some writing. I'm quite pleased with that. I like that a lot. Okay, hopefully you'll agree. That's quite a nice quick simple card again really easy for making um in bulk because you could pre-cut all your card stock pre-cut all your um dsp and then just add those and as i said you get 24 in a pack um so that would make 24 really quick and easy cards okay that's it for me for today and i'll see you again soon with another video thanks for watching and happy stamping bye for now